when you have a solution that you know can make a dramatic difference in someone's life, and if you're a health professional, like, please understand there is nothing more important than what it is you do. Like, I mean, nothing else matters than, than our health. So when you let someone go, you let them down. If you don't sell them, you can't serve them. Welcome back, everyone, to the Selling with Love podcast. This is your host, Jason Mark Campbell. I am excited about the incredible guests that I'm going to have with you today. The man has many titles. Let me give you a few of them. Nutrition, fitness, fat loss expert, author, coach, YouTuber, healthpreneur, founder, CEO, a health expert that actually helps health practitioners who feel imprisoned by their practice to learn how to build a business based on real practice that are systems that create more impact, more income, more freedom. The man has actually written several New York Times best-selling books such as All Day Energy Diet, All Day Fat Burning Diet, and the All Day Fat Burning Cookbook. He's on a mission to empower tens of millions of people to have greater health and help them have more epic health, fitness, and nutrition content delivered to them daily. The man was a former professional soccer player and has actually had his chance to share his message on major media outlets. For those of you who might have heard of shows like Dr. Oz and the Doctors, he has actually been active in business since 2005, sold his major health practice in 2018 after being 13 years at the helm. And now he is working on other practitioners who really want to go and push their message forward, which is perfect to bring him on the show today to talk about those of you who are really building a business. It will be more specific for those of you in the health business, but all the principles I know will be applicable to every industry, and we're going to have a ton of fun to talk about this and more about how we apply the principles to have more success, more freedom, and impact the one and only Yuri Elkheim. Welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thanks so much, Jason. It's been a very kind introduction. Now, you've been featured across the board. I mean, Huffington Post, Ask Man, US News, Breakfast Television, Perfect Fit, A Channel, CTV News, the whole shebang. So you've been out there, you've had a chance to talk a big time. And I just love to know, like, how did you get to this point where you had all this media? Was it like, did it all come overnight? Did this come through a slow learning curve? I, I'd love to get to the journey where you were working on your business and then suddenly, oh my God, you're on Dr. Oz, you're on The Doctors, what happened? Well, let me, let me preface this by saying, because there's a lot of health professionals who think that stuff matters. And here's the secret, none of it does, okay? It's all superficial, look at me, I'm so cool, hoopla. Um, but if you understand how the game is played, sometimes you know it's helpful to play it. So when I started my first business in 2005, I was actually seeking a $20,000 outside investment. So like an investor to come into our company because I was just starting off and not know what I was doing. And I was gonna use that money for PR. And thank God that didn't happen because I would have given away a good chunk of my company for something that is insignificant in the long run. And it took me a very, very long time to realize that stuff like that doesn't matter in the slightest. So the, the short answer is it took me a long time to get to that point where news anchors or you know whoever it was was like, oh, this, this is someone of substance. Let's feature this story. When I was on... Um, Dr. Oz and the Doctors. I mean, I was working with a publicist and it was around the time of uh, my first book, which became a number two New York Times bestseller. And I remember walking into the producer's office in Dr. Oz, at Dr. Oz and I knew how the game was played. I knew that, you know, to to make, I had to make their life easy. I had to show them stuff that they hadn't seen before because that's what we're all looking for is what's the hook here? What's the angle? And I walked in with these index cards that were cartoons that I had drawn. I had five pitches. I said, okay, pick a card, any card, right? Here's option number one, here's option number two. And they're like, oh, we've kind of done this before, I like this. And it was memorable. So that was like, the first part is obviously having the connection of having a publicist to make the, <laughs> the inlet there. And then the second thing is you have to be able to quote unquote, sell yourself or your ideas in order for them to be like, yeah, this sounds like a really good idea. So that's kind of how it all played out. But I also understood like with Dr. Oz, we sold, you know, just in terms of like outcomes, I had an eight minute segment. I think we sold close to 10,000 books just by being on that. But here's the thing is I knew going into that, that that was a blip on the radar. And it was something that I could always use as an accolade, like, hey, as seen on Dr. Oz, you know, but it's like, at the end of the day, no one cares about that stuff. What they care about is like, do you even understand me? Do you hear me? Do you, can you solve my problem? You know, and if you have some of that stuff, it's nice, but even if you don't, you know, you'll be okay. 
Yuri, I want to continue down this path because you talk on something really important about how sometimes it doesn't matter as much to be on these accolades as it's perceived to be. And yeah. I feel like today there's a lot of services that try to shortcut that path. It's like you can pay to be in Forbes. You can pay to be on these shows. And matter of fact, most of these outlets, like if you want to be on Ellen DeGeneres, you almost have to be ready to pay to play to get yeah. on these major media platforms. Yet I think at the time that you went and got on those platforms, you could do this with the publicists and stuff. But you had to have substance before you even showed up there. So yeah. can you talk about like, what are some of the core things that you had, you worked on to even be at a place that you're worthy of being spoken about, have the press? Because it's almost like we want to get to the good part without doing the work. And I want to hear more about the work you did that made you ready for those opportunities. I think the number one skill any leader can, can build is communication. If you're not a good communicator, you're going to lose in life in general. Like you're not going to be a good parent. You're not going to be a good human being. I mean, I shouldn't say this, this sounds a bit harsh, but you will be a more effective human and business owner, practitioner, coach, whatever, if you are a better communicator. And that's something that every single one of us has the opportunity and the responsibility to build because no one else is going to do it for you. And if you're expecting to hire some VA to improve your messaging, it's never going to happen. So you have to go through the, you have to live in the trenches. I mean, you have to understand like the number one skill, there's two skills that I think are like massively important for any business owner, copywriting and selling. And if we were to put those under one umbrella, it would be communication. One is written, one is verbal. It's the same thing though. And if you're not able to understand how to influence other people, you will be the one who's being influenced. So when I went to Dr. Oz, what had culminated over many, many years was the understanding of, I need to show these people something they have never seen before and package it in a way that is novel. The human brain is wired for novelty. So we, as consumers, we don't, we're not even aware of this, but this is what happens is we have this uh, inner dialogue that says, I've seen this before, next. I've tried this before, it didn't work, next. So there's nothing really ever new that's brought to the world. It's just packaged differently. And smart marketers, if you want to call us that, or smart communicators understand how to package what it is they're delivering in such a way that gets people's attention. So I think that's something I had to learn because I had to feed myself. Like I struggled in business for a long time because I didn't know this stuff. And then I really started understanding, oh, this is how you write so people take action. If I'm building an online business, writing is important. If I'm speaking on video or on audio, or if I'm speaking to someone on the phone or in person on Zoom, understanding where they're at, what they've seen or tried before, what hasn't worked and be able to meet them there and show them something new and different, or at least the way it's positioned is very important. So that is like the number one thing that every single person watching or listening to this has to develop. It doesn't, this like, it doesn't matter if you're a practitioner and you're like, I just want to work with my patients all day long. Like you have to become a better communicator. There's like no negotiation on that. I approve this message 100%. As a man that has written the book Selling with Love, I advocate for the same message, but I unapologetically call it sales. And yeah. I say everything is sales, totally. copy, communication, all of it. And I do believe is the most important skill that we need today more than ever. And mm -hmm. I want to kind of bring up the challenge that might be coming up in our minds, which is like, oh my God, is it just about sales? Does anything else even matter? And I know this is to be false, but what would you typically reply to people that feel like it seems like the world only cares about sales and nothing else or communication yeah. rather? I, I think the products, like what it is you're, you're delivering to people, whether it's a service or a physical product or whatever it is, is the most important thing at the end of the day, because you're only, you only exist as a service provider or a business if you can solve a problem. So if you can't do that, you don't deserve to be in business. So we must understand that that is the most important thing in business. However, the best product doesn't always win. It's the best known product that does. So if we look at, well, how do we get more known? How do we get more visibility? It's marketing. Marketing is sales at scale. So it's, it's like the chicken and egg question. And the way I see this is for most businesses that are doing under, and again, this is just a rough estimate, for most businesses that are not doing more than $250,000 a year, the proportion of their time that needs to be devoted to the skill of marketing and sales 
is disproportionately larger than the products. Because the thing is like, we work with health professionals who've already been in school for four, six, eight, 10, 12 years. They've already been working with clients and patients. Like how, like you're already amazing on the delivery side. How much more time do you need to spend on that? Like you're good. But what you suck at is everything else, which is at least initially the marketing and sales. So we have to focus there. And then as your business grows, it starts to change. So you start to move away from doing a lot of the selling yourself to really focusing on how do we optimize the delivery? How do we make this just like Disney World for our clients? Because you have the bandwidth in the space, you have more of a team to support you that might be doing the sales calls for you or, or the selling. But what, what's interesting is that like I've never, I don't know if I, I shouldn't say never, but I've very seldomly met a health professional who did not want to speak on stage, who did not want to do more podcasts, who did not want to do more summits, who did not want to do more sharing their content. Well, guess what all that is? It's all selling, right? When you speak from stage, you are selling a philosophy. You are selling a perspective. And if you don't understand, like selling is serving, selling is coaching, it's one of the same thing. It's about helping people transform. It's about helping people kind of get through their own BS. You know, call it coaching, call it selling. For me, it's just, it's the same thing. So I 100% agree with you, Jason. Like selling is everything, but with the disclaimer of you have to have a good delivery of products. I approve of this Canadian brother on the call with me because I feel like I, this is music to my ears. And I feel that for everyone listening, this is something I've advocated for and hearing it from you is just like, yes, yes, this is it, you know? And, you know, I, I'd want to ask you the question, which uh, is something I often, you know, feel is one of the reasons we get into certain businesses is I feel like for you, there must be something that breaks your heart. Like you see people that are health practitioners, like I'd love for you to tell me what is it that breaks your heart about the people you help and what happens when you actually give them them tools? So there's two things that break my heart. Number one is the people that say they want our help or they, they say they want a bigger future, but they allow fear to hold them back. Ah, it's too much money. Is it? Because your current situation is pretty brutal. And if you don't do anything about it, this is like, it's nothing's going to change. We have helped 12, more than 1200 practitioners and coaches over the past six years. And We've spoken, I would say, with at least five times more people who said, I want to do this, but then didn't. That's that's what really breaks my heart. It's And it's like, I think we all have the feeling of like, everyone should do my thing, right? Because my stuff is the best. Hopefully we all feel that. But I, I find that's really, for me, the, the, the saddest piece. And it, it can be very, it can be frustrating sometimes when you know someone has, well, here's the thing. They say they want something, but most people are not willing to make the sacrifice to get that thing. So there's two things. Number one, they're full of shit and they actually don't want what it is they say they want. Or number two, they're just scared. And we're all scared. We all have fear. But the difference is that some people use something called courage and move into that. And that's 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 the difference. Like there's no like, I need to get my ducks in a row. I need to have a briefcase of cash ready to go. I need to make sure this is perfect first. None of that stuff. It's just... I believe in myself, I have courage, this makes sense, let's move forward. So the thing that breaks my heart is what I just said, is like the people who say they want stuff and then don't do it because they're afraid. And then on the other side, uh, on a more positive note is when we do work with clients and very simply, we help our clients make more money. Like that's, if we were to boil down what it is we do, they come to us because they want more clients, they wanna build their business, they wanna have more impact. But how do we measure success? How do they measure success is how much more money are they making, right? If we call it what it is, so that's great, but what's what I what really warms my heart and and why I'm so excited about what I do is that it's amazing to see how people transform because you can't have business transformation without personal transformation. And I spend, you know, we spend a good amount of time with our clients helping them develop the skills of copywriting and sales even if they're a doctor because you can't outsource that stuff not initially until you're really good at it. And I see a lot of people do that and it's just catastrophic. So we're like, listen, we're gonna teach you how to fish so that you're never at the mercy of someone else who doesn't know what they're doing. But it's just amazing to see people who come in and you can see their their conviction, their tonality, how they, you know, how they lead a conversation. And then a couple months later, they're a completely different person and they're enrolling all the clients they should be enrolling, not forcing people to work with them, but understanding how to lead a conversation and and like there's the how-to side of things, but there's more importantly is the energetic side of things. Like how someone shows up is is everything. 
And to see someone go from, you know, that timid, apprehensive to like, I know if you don't work with me is the biggest mistake you're ever going to make, you know, and having that conviction and energy to see that transformation is that's, that's, that's what jazzes me up. Like, it's incredible to see that. So that's, that's on the, on the two sides of the spectrum there, the two things that break my heart, one slightly negative and one more positive. This is like speaking the same language. I'm so excited about what you do. I'm so glad that we have tons of practitioners that get to learn from someone like you that seems to be coming right from the heart. This is exactly what I advocate for and I see it. And the biggest thing that breaks my heart is these good companies, these good people that don't want to sell like the douchebags and then think that the way to do it is to not sell at all. It's like, I won't hard sell. I'm not going to sell at all. And it's like, no, you need to lead. You need to care. And you need to say, like you said, with conviction that I feel like I'm the best thing you can do right now to really change your situation. God, that energy comes from such a beautiful place. I call it selling with love. <laughs> totally. And it's, listen, I'm, I'm very, I have a belief that my solution is the best, not, not just the best solution, but the only solution for our prospective clients. And is that objectively true? No, but I, for, I'm delusional. Like I, I, I understand that I am delusional and I'm very confident because I've been doing this for a long time and I'm very good and we have an amazing team. Some people don't like that, but a lot of people do. They like the fact that I'm a straight shooter and that it is what it is. So what's the alternative if I'm not like this? The alternative is that I'm more, I don't even want to use the word humble because I think I'm very humble even though I'm confident. But the alternative to, to not being confident is to be unconfident. Like I would rather be overconfident but still grounded on earth than not believing in myself, you know? And I think this is something that a lot of people, not a lot, but I mean, enough people deal with where it's like, I don't want to come across as this or I don't want to come across as this. It's, it's, it's not about like, the thing is the big shift. And I want to, I just want to like preface this by saying I was terrible at sale, sales way back in the day. I was like, I just wanted to work with clients like everyone. Right. And I didn't want to talk about money and like, blah, blah, blah. And it's a mindset issue. It's it's all about when when we're stressed out about this stuff, the only location, like the only, we're focusing, if that's the case, we're focusing on ourselves. And as soon as I change the perspective to this person suffers if I don't sell them. And what I mean by sell them, it's like when when you have a solution that you know can make a dramatic difference in someone's life. And if you're a health professional, like, please understand there is nothing more important than what it is you do. Like, I mean... Nothing else matters than, than our health. So when you let someone go, you let them down. If you don't sell them, you can't serve them. No one does anything for free, right? We know the more people pay, the more they pay attention. <laughs> and when I, when I started to really, like in my heart, internalize that I truly, truly care about this person. It's not about closing them. It's about, you know, we have a pre-call ritual that... I encourage all of our clients and obviously our team as well to to adopt is, you know, before you jump on a call with anyone, it's take a minute, close your eyes and set an intention for the next 45, 60 minutes. And it's, it's, it really comes from a place of, I don't know this person, but man, how amazing is it that they came across something of ours in the ethers of the internet, booked a call with us. Like, just think of that, right? Like the, the, the opportunity we have to serve this person, they're in a place, they need our solution most likely, right? The opportunity to serve this person at the highest possible level, whatever the outcome is of this call, I'm gonna show up with the highest level of integrity, of care, because I do this because I love helping other people. And if I feel they're a great fit and they want our help, it is my duty and moral obligation to do whatever I possibly can to get them enrolled, not in our program, but in their bigger future. And like really taking a moment to talk about like just internally like come from that energetic place of whoever cares most about the client will win. If I care more about the prospects and what they can do with their future more than their story or whatever, then I win. But here's the thing is that the only way I win is if they win, right? We're not, we're not trying to deceive people. We're doing what's, I think the purpose of sales or in a selling conversation is helping the prospect to do what's best for them. And if it's not to work with you, that's totally fine, right? That's that's great. But if it is, and this is where people have to get better, if it is the right thing for that person to work with you, they know it and you know it, and it's been verbally agreed upon, you have to go to the, de the depths of the earth 
to get that person to take out their credit card and make the transaction happen. And that's not about being pushy. That is about being at the highest level, level like the highest possible level of service because you've recognized when you've done this over and over again that if people need to think about it for a couple of days, they're never coming back for the most part. Time kills all deals. The more time people have, the more they allow those stories to conjure up in their mind. And the more you start to see that happen over and over again, you start to see how, how humans operate. Right. And it's not about being pushy. It's like, don't please do not confuse my pressure for like my passion for pressure. Right. I, I really do believe this is going to solve your, you know, solve the problem. And when you come from that place of like, I truly, truly care about you, I don't even care about the commission. I'm not, I don't, I'm not talking about closing it. We're talking about, I truly care about you. And this is what's best for you because you've told me it is. We need to make this happen. That's the fundamental shift that I made many, many years ago. And everything I do now, comes from that place. So when I'm putting out contents, when I'm speaking to someone, it is like, that's that's the level I'm coming from. It's not like I need to close this deal because I could care less. And our company is very, very clear about this. We will never enroll a client because we have to hit our numbers if they're not the right fit. For us, I would rather not hit our numbers and work out of, and act out of integrity because it's the right thing to do. And it's also the right thing to do to lean into a conversation that is uncomfortable if someone knows that they should do this, but they're afraid. I understand if it's a no, but if you're afraid and you're gonna let that stop you, that's not okay. Amen, Yuri. And one of the things that fascinates me with everything you're saying right now is to me, this is very similar to what would be considered a coaching conversation, right? It's exactly. like, it's a different label. The only thing that's different is money's involved. And yeah. so I get so heartbroken for me to see when coaches have blocks about having an initial consulting session, an initial coaching call, and when it switches to the money part, they're not able to push past, past the, the buyer's barriers. And like as a coach, that's your number one skill is to make people change perspective, shift their beliefs. And if that belief is to bring you into the picture to really help them grow, and you're the one with the blocks, it's like, well, perhaps you also need the coaching because that is the critical, like that's the critical barrier to transformation is to get people to invest in themselves. Yuri, I'm inspired. I love the business you're doing. I love the way that you're doing business. I love the confidence that you have and the reinforcement of the message that you've shared today, which I think for everybody listening, I hope was an awakening, a kick in the butt in a beautiful way that business can be amazing. And when you learn the two key skills that Yuri was talking about, copywriting, sales, regardless of the industry that you're in, these are the key skills to grow any business. And of course, we've made the caveat that we're knowing that you are an ethical business, you have a good product, not the best, but good where you know you're providing so much more value than what you ask in return, your moral obligation has been set. Yuri has mentioned it, I say it as well, you're hearing it from every side. So please pay attention. And for those of you who are health practitioners, you're resonating with Yuri's message, you want to learn more, we're going to put some links to some amazing resources from him and his team. You're going to be able to go to healthpreneur.com, learn so much more about the practice he's doing. For anyone who's a health practitioner, as he's mentioned, this might be the number one action you can take today is to discover more of his programs, see how they can help you, and truly grow the impact that you want to make in your health business. Because God, do we know that our world needs to heal, especially when it comes to health. Well, all of us playing an individual part of making a bigger impact need to learn to communicate better. Yuri, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. I love your energy, your message. Big fan, so excited. And I hope for everybody listening, they're going to take the time to go and do some more research, follow you on all the channels. All the links will be made available in the show notes. And I need to ask you one final question that I love to ask all my guests, although you've pretty much answered it, but I'll give you a chance to say it in one sentence, which is... sure. You are on the Selling with Love podcast. What does selling with love mean to you? It's it's caring about other people and coming from a place of service and understanding you can't serve others unless they unless you've sold them. You are a legend, Yuri. Thank you so much for being on the show. And everybody, you've heard the message. You've heard his success. Selling, copywriting, having a good product, going past your own comfort zone to choose conversion over comfort and it's not manipulation, it is empathy. You have just heard the Selling With Love podcast. Stay tuned for some future episodes. And of course, take a minute to go discover more from Yuri. Fantastic content, fantastic guest. Thanks so much. I am your host, Jason Mark Campbell, and this is the Selling With Love podcast.